Hello friends. Happy Friday. My apologies for the sun, although the way things have been the last few days, I'm not going to apologize too much for the sun. Uh, it's good to see the sun, and it's a nice warm uh, 71 degrees right now. Yesterday was awful. It was raining and cold. I don't think we got above like 52 all day yesterday. It's just hard to believe this is the middle of June. But today is a beautiful day, and I have, of course, forgotten my camera to show you just how beautiful it is out there. But uh, I promise you, it's beautiful. And you can see the sun shining in here. <clears throat> so, I've got the uh, Arturo Fuente Claro 858. Sorry, we're just going to have to live with that. Uh, I think it's the 858 uh, Claro cigar. And you'll notice I am uh, sans spectacles, as the French don't say. Uh, the cataract procedure was a smashing success. I was pretty much back to normal by the end of the day on Monday. The biggest challenge I had was learning to sort of balance the two eyes because I overnight went from having a bad eye and a good eye wearing glasses to having a bad eye and a good eye not wearing glasses but the eye switched um, but boy it's, it's remarkable what, what they were able to do and it was so fast absolutely painless no, no trouble at all um, it, it's just we've come a long way I remember when my grandmother had her cataract removed and I don't know what the procedure was back then but they didn't correct vision they actually talked about it, and I hate to use this term, but what she said was they would burn them off. I don't think there were lasers yet. I mean, I was I was only like five or six years old, so. That's, that's getting close to 50 years ago. I don't think they were using lasers for surgical procedures yet. Anyway, um, I remember her having a bandaged patch over her eye for probably close to a week and uh, yeah just remarkable so all I have to do is keep a plastic shield over my eye when I sleep and take some eye drops three times a day and I can see I'm driving for the first time in my life without glasses uh, for the first time since I was in first grade I'm walking around without glasses and actually seeing the world it's remarkable. <clears throat> anyway, let's get on the road. I apologize for the for not having the other camera today. I I just I took I took a couple days off, actually two and a half days for the procedure and just to recover and kind of get used to the new the new eyes and. Uh, because of that, a lot of stuff got compressed into Thursday and Friday. And man, it's just been busy days. But all good. It's over. The weekend is here. And we shall endeavor to go home. But I, I just was in a rush this morning. I had a real early meeting. Uh, and I ran out of the house and just forgot the camera. So, my apologies. Um... You know, not, not a lot's happened other than this cataract surgery, and I don't want to waste your time talking about that. But when I was buying the cigar, I was thinking about <clears throat> how I learned about what I call candelas, but this is apparently technically called a claro. My first experience with, actually with cigars... Um, it was all secondhand. Uh, when I was a very young child, uh, we were living uh, on a street. We lived in, in South Philadelphia, row homes. So we basically shared a wall on either side with a neighbor. <clears throat> and uh, across the street, there was a, a gentleman who I think was named Sam. Um, 
but I don't know where I got that from. And I don't have a lot of information on this guy because I've talked to like my brother and sister and my, my dad and they, they do not seem to remember him. Which is strange because he was a huge man. He probably, to my, you know, six, seven year old eye, he probably weighed 300 pounds and he used to, if the weather was good, he would be sitting on his front step and he would be smoking a cigar. <clears throat> he was a very pleasant man. I was terrified of him, you know, when I was very young. I ultimately learned to, like, wave hello to him and, and nod and things like that. I, I never really would have considered him a friend or anything, because uh, I, was, I was much too young to be interacting with adults like that. But he was, he was a pleasant man. He, his neighbors would come out, and they would often sit on the step with him and, and talk. Uh, but he was constantly smoking these big green cigars and I just have this these these very vivid images of him like chewing on the butt of the cigar and uh, yeah, I can see these things and they had this almost they, they seemed more like like food than, than a cigarette would have seemed to me at that age and my dad was a cigarette smoker so I was quite familiar with people smoking but this was more like he was eating this thing because he was constantly chewing on it and it was green and, and the end would get wet and, and it was a little disgusting. But And then he would finish and he would just throw the butt out into the street. And oddly enough, they didn't pile up. We, we had street sweepers. I don't think they came by that often, though. So somebody must have been cleaning up uh, in the morning and a lot... Back then, a lot of uh, the older retired women would go out in the morning and like, sweep the front of the house, sweep off their steps. And I bet one of them was just sweeping up the cigar butts. But I can remember looking at these things, landing in the street, and, and you know, sometimes they would still be glowing a little bit red and smoke curling off of them and the, the, the wet, chewed green end of it. and. And the smell it had that that vegetal uh, candela smell that, and these things were probably as cheap as as you could get. But it, it, to most kids, I think it would have been considered a stench rather than a smell. It was very strong. But all of this just combined in me, and and I knew, I knew I would be in a lot of trouble if I did it. But I knew that I wanted to smoke one of those cigars. I admired Sam. I, I didn't ever get to know him, um, but he was he was a big influence in my early life, I suppose, because he was he was always there. He he was a little bit a little bit scary, so I because you know, he was big and loud, so I, I would keep my distance, but I would watch him, and I I, I watched those cigars, and I, I can't say I learned anything from him, but but. It, it occupied my time. And one other thing I remember about him is he had a very odd habit at Halloween. So at Halloween, that was the one time when I would gladly walk up to him because I wanted to get my trick-or-treat candy. And I don't know what Halloween's like in your neck of the woods. I know it's changed quite a bit. But back then... We would walk up and down the streets, and people would, if the weather was nice, people would sit out on their step with a big bowl of candy, and they'd be talking to neighbors, and they'd comment on the costumes as the kids walked by, and, and I can remember walking up to Sam, and he'd be sitting there with this big brown bag, and in it, he would have these little plastic bags tied with a twist tie. I, actually, he it wasn't plastic bags. They were pieces of saran wrap. So he took a piece of saran wrap, and he would take change and put it into the saran wrap and then tie it with a twist knot. It was odd amounts of change. Like, you'd get 15 cents, or... Which, keep in mind, this was the 1970s. 
Um, but sometimes it would be like 22 cents or something. So I don't know if he was just like randomly taking change out of a bucket and tossing it into saran wrap or if he had some bizarre mathematical method of working out how much change could go into each one each year. Um, but you know, it, it, it's funny, I, I remember, I, I'm sure that every person that lived on that street, some of them I knew quite well, some of them were, you know, f ch childhood friends, their parents and, and family and things like that. I could not tell you their name. I could not tell you what they looked like. I could not tell you certainly what they gave out on Halloween night. But I am fairly certain Sam's name Sam, and I know he gave out those little little saran wrap bags of uh, coins every year. And I know he smoked those cigars. I just wish I knew what brand they were. You know, they were clearly like a White Owl or Prince Edward or, you know, one of those cheap factory-made cigars, but they were bright green candela. And if I could find out what those were, I would buy a box and smoke them this summer in Sam's memory, because I'm sure Sam's no longer with us. I guess the moral of the story is... Be careful, because you never know who's watching. You never know how much you're influencing a young child. You just you just don't know, because the fact is the child doesn't know. I didn't know at the time that I would still remember this guy 50 years later. 45 years later, whatever it is. I, I had no concept of 45 years later. And of course, he was no more significant to me than any of the other people in that neighborhood at the time. But there was something about the combination of, of things he did that uh, gave him a permanent place in my memory. Interesting. Anyway, folks, I hope you're getting some of this beautiful weather. This is really nice. I feel bad about complaining earlier because this is turning out to be a beautiful day. Well, I think I'm going to go home and hopefully sit out on my back patio and, and finish this up. No alcohol, because I'm on antibiotics, but we'll see. And, yeah, I just get on with the weekend and see what my wife's going to let me do, because she's still being very protective. The list of things I'm not allowed to do is, is growing rapidly. And I've just decided, and many of you had... Um, suggested or, or implied this uh, she's right it doesn't really matter if I believe it or not she's right she cares about me enough to make a, make it an issue she's right and it's been fine it's been it's been quite wonderful actually um, last thing before I sign off is I want to uh, I want to thank you all because I got a really nice outpouring of you know, best wishes and prayers and everything else when I talked about having this procedure done. Uh, and it was, it's wonderful. And I really think that works, guys. I, I really do. And I attribute the success of this procedure in some part to, uh, to your kind thoughts and prayers. So thank you for that. And my apologies for not keeping up with the comments this past week. I couldn't really look at the computer screen very easily and uh, needed to kind of get past that. So I'm going to be answering comments hopefully tonight and tomorrow and get all caught up on that. So have a great weekend, guys, and I'll talk to you on Sunday. Take care.